जय हेलो Good afternoon to one and all present here. We have gathered here for the G button of our endowment lecture. Now I request all the special chief guests to occupy their desks. I am requesting everyone to rise up for Tamil Thai Valdhuru.
Now I invite Mr. R. Mayur Swami, President, PhD Tech Alumni Association, to deliver a welcome address. Dr. K. Pragasam, Patton, PhD Tech Alumni Association. Dr. Sriraj, Principal, PhD Polytechnic College. And Speaker of the Day, Dr. Professor V. S. Raju, former IIT, Director of IIT Delhi. Another secretary, Dr. Arasu. Alumni Association Treasurer, Dr. Dr. Sundaram. And all the professors present here, students, staffs of PhD Alumni Association. Good afternoon to all. Good afternoon. You have to energy to get to know about the Wonderful topic today. PSG Tech Alumni Association is very happy to welcome you all for this wonderful address on sustainable engineering by none other than our experienced and learned professor, Dr. V.S. Raju, who has got an extensive knowledge on this subject. Today, we are all living on only one year. Many of us think that we have many years to live, but it is not so. We have whatever we study, we produce, we manufacture, and it is used after that, life of the product, what is its going to be done with the product. The future, we are now in our hands. We have to take care of the health of our environment. The sustainable engineering deals with such focused areas, how the products will be manufactured, designed, and produced with economics and also environment friendly. World Health Organization has formed a SDGs. There are 17 SDGs, that is Sustainable Development Goals. After that, this is one of the priority. We should safeguard our environment and we should leave this earth livable forever for the younger generations and the future generations also. So this is a very, very apt topic today for all of you when you are into the engineering and design and manufacture and use. And after that, the product should be again reusable or recycled. It is not supposed to be dumped onto this earth. An example is plastic bottles, plastic waste. Today we are all suffering because of that. The cost of plastics is going to be enormous in future. It's not even it cannot measure. The world is suffering because of plastics. Unless you all work together, take care. Innovative designs, innovative concepts to avoid usage of plastics or reuse of plastics. So the future generations will be disease free and will be healthy and our earth will be livable. With this few words, I wish you all the very best for this wonderful lecture and welcome to all and the, the people who present over online also. As all of you know, the PhD Tech Alumni Association is doing, doing a lot of services to connect with the students throughout the world. So I request all of you when you graduated also, participate in the PhD Tech Alumni Association activities and be a part of that. And this point, you have your own colleague Madam Sandhya, she is uh, Dr. Patma Abhinsh Carter, 
and she is present in before you to address also so welcome you once again for this wonderful session thank you very much thank, thank you sir, sir. Next, Dr. B. Giriraj, Principal, PhD, Polytechnic College, will honor the chief guest with a shawl. requesting Dr. K. Prakashan, Patron, PhD Tech Alumni Association, and Principal, PhD College of Technology, to deliver present presidential address. Chief guest of this uh, endowment lecture, Professor V.S. Raju, <coughs> former director of IET Delhi, Mr. Mahishami, President, PhD Tech Alumni Association, Dr. Asu, Dr. Giriraj, Dr. Chandra Mohan, <coughs> Dr. B. R. Prasad Raju, former scientist, DSC, the other faculty members, Dr. Sundaram, and the students of UG and VG programs. A very good afternoon to all of you, and I join Mr. Mahisami in welcoming you all for the Dr. G. Patmanabham Endowment Lecture on Sustainable Engineering. I need not get into the topic already elaborated by Mr. Mahisami. Beyond that, the background of this uh, lecture, I should make maybe a few words I should speak about it. I have met Dr. G. Padmanabham during some of the project review meetings in the uh, Institute Conference Room. Professor P. Athagrishan used to be the chief of such committees. He has brought many uh, luminaries to the campus. Dr. G. Palmanabham is one among them. And Dr. Prasadaj used to be always uh, persuading to apply for various projects. So his motivation for this also is to be mentioned all the time. It took some time to settle down. It started early, then COVID and many other endowment lectures were there. Now things are settled. Maybe next year onwards, some of the respective departments will take it forward. Maybe Professor G. Balmanabham's lecture, maybe the metallurgy department. And there are another two which will go to uh, the alumni associated department. Uh, and coming to the uh, achievements of uh, Dr. G. Balmanabham, he was the, there will be a clear introduction by, about the endowment. He was the director of uh, ARCI. And his daughter, Ms. Sandhya, studied here. I informed the departments also about the contribution of the alumni for this endowment lecture. I am sure some of the students from the computer science department will be here. Please understand the meaning of this endowment. This is to honor some of the great visionaries in research who mentors the institutions associated with them in various ways. May not be their alma mater, but institutions where they have a lot of admiration. So, Dr. Palpanam was one of the admirers of uh, PhD College of Technology. The activities here towards research naturally it attracts. And he has helped many uh, faculty members to grow in their own chosen fields by sanctioning projects, guiding them, and giving his words of advice. And now, uh, this endowment has been <coughs> created by their family and I am very grateful to them for creating that thoughtful uh, moment. I thank Professor V.S. Raju for coming over here to enlighten our teachers and students on sustainable engineering and Dr. Prasad Raju for uh, guiding us in conducting this program. Uh, he used to remotely guide us uh, to take care of various uh, activities of this uh, lecture. Though it is a lecture, but it has been done in a very elaborate way with proper information to all the stakeholders and making the 
hall available and uh, so that the first year students now only they are here in the campus and a few pg students so they will understand the meaning of endowment the alumni network and some of the top academic leaders of the country and their address to the students with these few words i thank all of you once again and request professor vijay saju as per the mc to take over thank you to call ms g sandhya b e c s e i would like to call ms g sandhya b e c s e from 2012 batch to give speech about dr g padmanabhan endowment a uh, very good afternoon to all of you today we are gathered here for an endowment lecture uh, for dr g padmanabham as a proud daughter of a true visionary i would like to um, thank you all for your gracious presence um dr padmanabham's contributions to the metallurgical sciences and technology applications and uh, technology transfers are quite well known in the scientific community and we we lost a great scientist too soon but as his family and uh, fellow fellow scientific community we all must strive to keep his legacy alive and um, and um and, and as a proud daughter um and and uh, an alumni of psg tech i am truly honored to be present here amongst such esteemed guests faculty and the students of psg tech i am truly thankful to all of you present here and today uh, june 5th being world environment day and also dr padmanabham's birthday couldn't be a more appropriate day to present a lecture on sustainable engineering which as uh, mr malasamy and dr prakashan already uh, talked about uh, i'm i'm truly honored to be here and special thank you to uh, dr vs raju to uh, to present today um and yeah, yeah thank, thank you all for for your gracious presence and a very good afternoon thank, thank you. you thank you ma'am i'm requesting dr r murugan secretary psd tech alumni association to introduce the chief guest So good afternoon, good afternoon, all present here. It's my pleasure to introduce our chief guest, Professor V. S. Raju, former director of IIT Delhi, for graciously accepting our invitation to join us today. Thank you, sir. Professor V. S. Raju is a well-acclaimed expert in geotechnical and foundation engineering with special focus on onshore, coastal, offshore, and ocean structures. He graduated with B. in civil engineering from Andhra University. M.A. in soil mechanics and foundation engineering from I.I.C. and a Ph.D. from University of Karlsruhe, Germany. Started his career as lecturer, civil engineering, Institute of Technology, now called I.I.T. Banaras University. He then moved to I.I.T. Madras and rose to the level of professor of civil engineering, ocean engineering, and dean I.C.S.R. I.I.T. Madras. Subsequently, he took charge as director of I.I.T. Delhi. He was a member of Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. and the lead partner by raju foundation a ngo dedicated to rural transformation he has actively represented several important committees a few of them include chairman naval research board yeah rio 
Research Council, Central Road Research Institute, Sectional Committee and Honorary Secretary of INAE, Civil Engineering Panel Program Advisory Committee of DST, Member Steering Committee on Labor and Employment Planning Commission, Indo-German Consultative Group, Governing Council, National Institute of Ocean Technology, Research Council, National Institute of Oceanography, Executive Council, National Academy of Construction, Board of Governors, National Institute of Design. Served as an independent director on the boards of Bharti Airtel Limited, Nagarjuna Construction Company Limited, Kirloskar Company Limited, Satyam Computer Services Limited, to name a few. The following are the honors and awards received in recognition of this meritorious service. Commanders crossed by Federal Republic of Germany, highest award given to a selected foreigner, 25th IGS Annual Lecture Award by Indian Geotechnical Conference, Lifetime Contribution Award by Deep Foundation Institute of India. Few fellowships to his credit include Fellow INAE, Honorary Life Fellow, Indian Geotechnical Society, Honorary Fellow, AP Academy of Sciences. Some of his notable achievements during the career include significant contribution to liquefaction of saturated sands, vesicular laterites, design of piles in weak rocks, monitoring performance of dry rocks, jetties, birthing structures, high-rise towers, safe deposition of fly ash, extraction of energy from sea waves, leading to setting up of 150 kilowatt prototype system of Toronto Coast, first of its kind in the world, and the establishment of one megawatt ocean thermal energy conversion pilot plant at Kavarati. He has been a foundation consultant for over 650 projects covering power stations, atomic power plants, fertilizer plants, refineries, offshore structures, dams, ash ponds, high-rise buildings, metros, airports, etc. in India and abroad, making it the highest number of projects handled by an academician. Many innovative ideas were given, resulting in significant savings in cost and time, benefiting the nation substantially. He continues to provide consultancy to major projects, including a mega multi-purpose irrigation for polar autumn project. He has played a lead role in developing Ocean Engineering Center IIT Madras as one of the best in this part of the world, a national institute of ocean technology under the Ministry of Earth Sciences. As a dean of ICSR IIT Madras, he contributed to the industry institute collaboration and growth of both R&D projects and consultancy, which got scaled up to five times in five years. As a director at IIT Delhi, he ensured enthusiastic participation of faculty in R&D projects, leading to five-fold increase in grants and consultancy, establishment of IBM Research Center and Bharati School of Telecom on campus with substantial funding. He conceptualized and implemented safe water for everyone using effective technology, establishing several water plants in Punjab villages, private partnership board, applying uh, supplying much needed pure drinking water at most affordable cost, impacting a million people in 220 villages. It received many recognitions, most significant being the water, best water supply quality initiative from Water Digest and UNESCO, Japanese award for most innovative development project, best living environment award from Dubai municipality, and human health human settlement program. In collaboration with l and Construction Company and National Academy of Construction, he has set up skill training centers in five villages, training 8,000 unemployed youth in different construction trades who are employed by the industry within and outside India. As chairman and member of various technical committees, he ably mentored many engineers, researchers in taking up projects of great relevance. He continues to play a stellar role in spearheading several programs of contemporary interest and guide policy makers in formulation and implementation of projects of national importance. It's an honor for all of us to have you as a chief guest today. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. On, on behalf of PhD Tech Alumni Association, I am happy to call Professor V.S. Raju, former director, IIT Delhi, to give chief guest address. Uh, I must say to all of you, those faculty, colleagues, and then also my dear students. Actually, I would like to call all of you my, call all of you my grandchildren. Actually, you are even younger than my grandchildren. Uh, first and foremost, I am delighted to be on this campus. Even though I have been in academics for so long. Am I audible at the back? Can you hear me properly? You can? Oh, sure. 
uh, I had uh, I, I had visited only PhD tech uh, only once. Very unusual uh, for various reasons. You know, I was so inspired to see the history of these institutions, the founders. You know, what inspired me very much is that uh, the, all the four brothers, way back, unanimously agreed that they will give 20% of their health you know, for education. It is absolutely stunning. You know, I didn't know that before. I hope, how many of you know this? Please raise your hands, the students. Students. Not yet, but, but you will know, know, you will know. Please go around and see that. You know, uh, that what makes the difference. You see, that is, uh, that is the key. So, you know, uh, we unfortunately are not taught about our ancient traditions. You know, sarve jana sukhino bhavantu. May all beings be well and happy. All beings, not, not only human beings. That, that is our core philosophy. So you should also understand that. The second thing is, how many of you heard about Swami Vivekananda? Can you raise your hands? Swami Vivekananda? How many of you have read uh, his uh, speeches or books? Or now you can hear it on YouTube. Please do that. Go to YouTube and then see that. So what Swami Vivekananda said was, you have to first and foremost have confidence in yourself. You should believe yourself. You should say, I can achieve this. That is the most important point. That is the starting point. Actually, I never uh, uh, thought that my biodata will be read. You know, it's so long. It's really not required. What we normally say is, have you heard this? Did you know whether the rice is cooked or not? How many grains you have to test? Only one. Anyway, fine. So, but what is not told is, like most of you, I came from a small village. Small village in Andhra Pradesh. You know, my father was a small farmer. He studied only after class five. Okay. My grandfather told him that he cannot afford to send him to high school. Because out of the eight brothers, the seventh one was already going to high school. So my father's dream was that I complete high school. You know, for example, in the village, I don't know how many of you come from rural background. How many of you come from rural background? Please raise your hands. Rural background, like this. If you raise, you raise like this. If you don't want, it's okay. So, you know, obviously, you cannot think beyond an element. Okay? So, you could not uh, teach me anything because of limited education. But what he taught me was focus, you know, concentration. So, he used to wake me up at 4 o'clock in the morning. No electricity in those days, all dark, you were afraid, you were a kid, but you would sit next to me and make me sad. So the message I wanted to give you is that if you know how to focus, with self-confidence in yourself, believing in yourself, that's what Swami Vivekananda said, there is no limit, you can reach anywhere. That is the next point. Now, coming back to uh, this lecture, I had the great privilege of knowing Dr. Padmanabhan. You know, we had two things in common. We both studied in the same engineering college. That is the College of Engineering and University. What a coincidence. You know, how, how often it happens like that. Second thing is, he did his PhD from IIT Delhi during my period. At IIT Delhi. I don't want to use the word director. This is all imposed by us, the British, by the British. I always call myself as the head of the family. What is the role of the head of the family? 
health has to take care of everyone in the family. From top to bottom, no? So, from faculty to uh, supporting staff to students to everything else. So, that is the second thing. The next thing that uh, we had somewhat in common is that uh, I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to go to Germany. And then so I was so impressed. I learned so much in Germany, especially discipline. Discipline, I'll come to that point. So, much, so then I told the German authorities that there should be exchange programs between Indian institutions and IITs. So we needed a program of exchange of master students between, of course, those days we had to limit ourselves to some number of institutions that were IITs and top German universities. So he also went to Germany as a part of his PhD program. And then, uh, so he had a good exposure of that. And later, of course, many things. I've uh, heard of him and come to know of him. See, nothing has happened by one individual, no matter how big it is. Whether it's the prime minister or anybody, director or principal or head or whatever it is. It always happens to the, due to the combined effort of a large number of people. So, sustainability, how will it happen? It will happen not by one person. It will happen by the combined effort of all of us. Especially you, the young people, have the responsibility to make it sustainable. Have the responsibility to make life comfortable for yourself, but also to the future generations. No, that is the key. So uh, don't worry too much about what is written on the slides. That you can, if you are interested, you can see it any time. I mean, those days, these days, uh, technology is available. No, with the click of a mouse. The PPT can be transferred to all of your, all of your accounts, only you should have the interest in the time. And also don't hesitate also to ask any questions, you know, feel free. And you know, uh, two or three things are required for the excellence of an institution. Okay? The vision of the founders and the financial support, the faculty, and the students. You see, after all, uh, how did we get so much recognition for PhD tech or even for IITs? Because our students became very successful globally. And how is the country now respected globally? You see, it is respected because Indians have earned it for themselves, starting with the uh, with their backgrounds, you know, and then uh, they became very visible and they went to leadership positions. And that is one thing. The second thing, of course, is we have now, uh, I do not know, some people may like or may not like, I like our Prime Minister very much, Prime Minister Modi, so who has created so much respect for the country globally because he's very confident of himself and the way he presents himself internationally and so on and so forth. What unfortunately has happened is that the British, I think it was not more than 10,000 people from Britain, you youngsters may not know the history of British India. What they said was, you Indians don't know anything. You are slaves. And the British said, we are the masters. So we will teach you how to live, how to work, what to do, what not to do, and so on and so forth. Therefore, it's, it's very tough, you know, when people are brainwashed to believe not in themselves. They need to believe that not, they are not capable, they are inferior, you know. Then it's very difficult to come out of it. In fact, uh, I felt the same way first when I went to Germany in 19... Uh, 60, uh, I think I went in 69. No, 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 sorry, 63, 63, 63 December, I mean. I'm forgetting my, uh, yes, it is. So I thought, you uh, know, 
they are very, very superior and you know, you are coming from an Indian background, you know, so on and so forth. And of course, you learn a lot from there, uh, especially the discipline. So my assessment is general. Of course, there is always exception to a generality, exception to a rule. The general thing is we have very good genes, Indians, a lot of intelligence. So we know a lot of things. We can talk about everything. But we don't have discipline. You know? So the discipline I saw in India is extremely disciplined and very hard working. So in other words, what I am saying, trying to say is we are moving ahead. We are moving forward. We are making a lot of progress. And then how much progress will happen will depend on all of you, the present generation students. Your next batches and then, you know, people before you. you know, everybody has to work in the same direction. And with a common goal. Then, of course, uh, we will definitely become a developed country one day, whenever it is. Of course, the, 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 the definition of development also is uh, varying from person to person, people to people. So, with this uh, background, I will try to explain some concepts. And I wanted to tell you things from my own experience. You know, there are two ways of doing it. And you can talk, you can go to the net and search and then, you know, get uh, literature and then talk about it. Alternatively, you can uh, share your own experience, whatever it is. So, I'm a civil engineer. And how many of you are civil engineering students here? Please raise your hands. Civil engineering? It doesn't matter. So even if no civil engineering student is here, it doesn't matter. How many of you are IT students? But what about the rest? They're all non-IT. How many of you are non-IT? Because only six, eight people have raised their hand. So I am assuming that the rest of you are... Yeah. All disciplines are important. So therefore, no matter in which discipline you are, Never feel that uh, you missed your ITA seat or whatever it is. You know, uh, for example, it always happens, you know, when there is a lot of competition, somebody will get something, somebody will get something else. So, in my career as a teacher in the IIT system, you always get some students, you know, from your region and where you belong to, and they would come and say, sir, I wanted to do a computer science, but I got only mechanical. I said, don't worry. First, First you become, become a good mechanical engineering, then you become a very good IT person afterwards. Doesn't really matter. What, what matters is whatever you are studying right now, be totally focused on that. You know, once you do a good job of what you are supposed to do, then you can do everything else. You know, that, that is actually and also there is a misconception that even financially people think that only IT people get maximum money, which is absolutely not true. You know, even if money is the focus, it's not necessarily that uh, you have to only do IT. In other disciplines also there are enormous opportunities. You can become an entrepreneur, you can you know, do so many things and you know, so, so then, but, but of course, IT is also very important. IT is a tool which we use extensively even in all hardcore disciplines, including civil engineering. Okay. Now, now let us look at uh, some of the slides. Oh, yeah, I have it. Yeah. See, for uh, what we will cover, try to cover, also, also, somebody, somebody has, has to caution me if I'm exceeding the time. Because we teachers, when we start talking, we never stop. <laughs> so, <laughs> not all of them, at least, that is my habit. So, there are general environmental issues. You know, of course, it was talked about plastic, of course, which is a, which is a major issue. Everything is a major issue, but plastic, of course, is a major issue. And, uh, uh, 
there are lots of initiatives. People talk a lot about it. Obviously, if you, if you look at the globe, the major environment problem are we, the humans. Now, everything we are creating, only we are destroying the environment. No other species, no other animal or bird or anything, they never destroyed anything on the, on the But that can't be helped. As we are growing, our aspirations are growing. Then we have to create comfort, you have to create health, and you have to create so many things. But that should be created with an awareness. So there are a lot of things. The flip side, that means the bad side of talking environment uh, too much is that if projects are delayed, projects are delayed. In India, there are two major causes. One major cause is land acquisition, giving the land. For any, after all, you have to start an institution, you need land. If you want to do a highway, you need land. And if you want to build a dam, some areas will get submerged because you need water. So, so therefore, that one issue. The second is the environment. The so-called environment list, you know, go on talking negatively about every project. You see? And then the projects are delayed. And if the project, you see, time is the most precious thing in life. Time never comes back, no? So you are, no, whatever is over is over. Today is over, it will never come back again. So therefore, project completion also on time is also very important. So keeping in this mind, I will share with you very quickly some of my own experiences. And then afterwards, if time permits, we can also have an interaction, some question So in sustainable you make practice, first I'll talk about utilization of flash. I'll explain what flash is afterwards. Optimum foundation designs, you know? Of course, foundations you don't see because they're all below ground. Even this building has a foundation, no? you, you must be knowing about that. But foundations are like roots for a tree. Roots are never seen, right? But without roots, what will happen to the tree? It won't exist. So therefore, that's also very important. Then drinking water. I mean, it's such an essential thing. Without that, there is no life. Without water, there is no life. So how many days we can live without water? I don't know, but it cannot be more than a couple of days. And the water should be safe. If you drink polluted water, naturally you are sick. Then, of course, uh, skill development. The skills are so critical. Actually, if you see the progress of uh, some of the countries like Germany, where I have first-hand experience. In Japan, of course, I visited only once or twice, but not so much, but I understand from the literature and all. They are highly skilled. You know, to lay a brick in construction in Germany, the person concerned should go through a three year of three years of training under a master's mason, three years, and attend a school weekly twice. Then only he is allowed to lay a brick. Just as an example. Same with uh, automobiles, same, th same with everything. So that is skill development is the, one of the major challenges. There are programs like Skill India, and then they are trying to do that. And then finally, I want to talk about the role of institutions like PSG. And after what I have seen, I don't think I need to add too much to that. You are already doing what you are supposed to do. Then, as I said, general environmental issues, there are a lot of things being done. Avoid, mitigate, and remediate emissions. It's responsible for climate change and environmental contamination, you know. We are talking about the green energy, solar, wind, automobiles, and so, so many things are happening. Reduce consumption of fuel, all those issues are there. Reduce waste, whatever you do, you should not. You should minimize waste. You cannot completely eliminate it, but you should minimize it. 
then manage the materials you know wisely minimize the use of materials for the same task and of course pollution prevention naturally we should not pollute then enhance the product for example like the automobiles you know the present the automobiles so consume maybe 50% of the fuel that they were the similar automobile was consuming maybe 10 years back or something In sustainable civil engineering, uh, the catchwords are projects are executed using the safest, most environmental friendly, and long-lasting methodologies. Obviously, long-lasting means what? Suppose if you are able to enhance the life of a building from 50 years to 100 years, obviously you don't have to build them again after 50 years, right? So typically, maybe life may be now 50 years. You have to use new methodologies, cut down emissions during a project. You know, for example, when you are doing projects, a lot of dust is generated, a lot of waste is thrown around, and lots of safety issues are involved. So that would be avoided. Extend the lifespan of the completed projects, and then saving resources on repairs and reconstruction. I already said that, you know, so there should be new. Perform life cycle assessment. Life cycle means the, the total life of the structure. And then, and you have to use resources naturally widely. Minimize use of non-renewable resources. That means resources which cannot be recycled should be minimized. And then resilience. That means it should be sound. Whatever you are building it should be very sound. Let me first talk about the fly ash utilization. Unfortunately, Indian coal has got a lot of ash. You know, ash is like a very fine powder. When you burn coal and generate power, what remains is the ash. And the ash content is very high, 30 to 40 percent. But you can't help it. Uh, in 20, 2018, we produced 270 million tons of ash. That is a huge quantity. Don't worry about the numbers. It's very difficult for you to imagine what is 200 million and so on and so forth. Ash has to be put somewhere. So we create a pond and store ash. Ash ponds today occupy 65,000 acres of land. Imagine, 65,000 acres of land. That is huge. You know, huge area is there. And if you don't handle this ash scientifically, then it will create a lot of pollution and then uh, air pollution, uh, you know, it, it flies, dust, and sick disease, everything will happen. Look at the progress that we have made in the ash utilization. 1996, we were producing 68 million tons per year, and we were using only 10%. Okay, 2018-19, we are producing 270 million tons. Imagine how many times it has gone up? More than three, three and a half times. Why? Because we need more power, you know, so more ash. But we are able to utilize 78%. So we were able to increase ash utilization 10% to 78%. That's a huge achievement. You know, but at the same time, you know, uh, unutilized ash almost remains the same. Of course, 61 to we have reduced to 49, but so still we have to find some solution. Uh, the different utilizations: 27 percent goes to cement. Compared to earlier, uh, ash is mixed with cement. Still, it will give you the same purpose. It will serve the same purpose. Earlier, people were not aware of that. I'm happy to say that uh, we are one of the first at IIT Delhi to use cement with flash. Because I was proposing all your ash utilization, and you would always lead by example. You know? 
Uh, lead by example, I'll take a minute to tell about my experience. Here, are we allowed to use motorbikes, students? They can come on motorbike to the campus? They can. OK. So in Delhi, we have a 320 acre campus only. IIT Delhi is one of the smallest campuses. And hostile to departments is not very far, less than a five, 700, 600, 700 meters. So a lot of motorbikes. People used to come, make a lot of noise, and it is scary and all that. I told the students one day, how about uh, stop using motorbikes on campus? No, sir, this and that, as you know, as usual. Then I started going to my office. Residents of the director's residence to the office man, bike, bicycle. No problem, everybody stopped using it, right? So that's what I'm saying is for you also in future, if you want to convey something when you grow up, always first set an example. It's all a lot of detail and our target is to use 100% utilization and uh, there are some challenges. But, but you, you can, can read it later. I'll skip this. A typical ash pond uh, looks like this. You know, you, you, you have a valley, you build like a dam, you know, you can see that on the, I think there's a point here. This point is, I'm not getting it. Anyway, and then they just put ash behind. How to design optimum foundations? You know? <laughs> the joke is that, especially in rural areas, by the time they finish the foundations for their building, all the money is over. So they spend so much on foundations out of ignorance. Leave that. Now I'm talking about major projects. May their projects. Uh, we already talked about it. Uh, Safety, economy, early, contribute, early completion, and so on. And economy, ease of execution, timely early completion. Delhi International Airport. All my senior colleagues must have seen Delhi International Airport. The student probably not yet, but one day you will fly there. Terminal T3, that is a new terminal. Terminal T1, which is a small terminal, which was built maybe when, when I was a student. That time they didn't know much. They adopted the pile foundation. Pile foundation is what? What you do is you drill into the ground, some depth, say 20, 25 meters, put steel and pour concrete, so that you are transferring the load to a lower level, to a better strata. Because Terminal T1 was on pile foundation, people thought that Terminal T3 is huge. So it should also have pile foundation. So the, uh, every, every, everybody decided, Larson and Dubro, the biggest construction company in India, got the contract from the owner, which is GMR, to build Terminal T3 on pile foundation. Because I consulted to LNT for the last 40, 50 years, that came to me for review. To cut the long story short, after convincing everybody, I proved to them that no piles are required. You simply can make a raft and support the structure on top of that. So what is the advantage of that? You don't have to do piles, so you save six months on construction time. Okay? And what we estimate is, every year costs 10% of the total value of the project. So the value of the project is 12,000 crores. So you are saving uh, six months of construction time, you will save something like 800 crores, number one. Then, but, uh, let, me, let me go to the next slide. Yeah, at 10% interest, cost of financial saving is 600 crores. And what is the benefit you get if you complete the airport six months ahead of time? Huge, no? So, tremendous uh, saving. And who will benefit? 
naturally the owner is saving citizens of delhi obviously they get the airport 6 months before then obviously the nation see one city gets benefit the whole nation benefits right so like that you have to think through so where does the defect lie why did such a wrong decision take in initially lack of experience lack of knowledge and uh, so therefore we have to through our efforts as teachers as practicing engineers we have to create that confidence and then do an optimum uh you see here there i have shown you uh, the foundation see ra- I, i don't know the pointer is it working here when anyway, it doesn't matter i have written there now you can see the draft and below are the piles you know to transfer the load related death so earlier all high rise towers are on piles so you need large number of piles then we we came out with the concept of a pile assisted draft for the first time we have introduced in india the concept of a pile assisted draft so here for example there is a 51 story tower 51 story so huge you know you can imagine uh, so uh, that uh, it with the two basements so uh, we have uh, don't go into the details there so sometimes we believe foreigners are better right that is because of our slavish you know the way we were brain or so sometimes we'll say oh i'm doing a 51 story tower let me go be a foreign consultant you know and they hesitate to pay uh, one tenth of what the foreign consultant costs to an indian consultant they are very happy to pay whatever the foreign consultant asks but the indian consultant oh no no you okay you are happy you should be happy with the customer so he proposed uh, uh the a, a singapore consultant proposed a huge raft you can see here uh, more than 3600 meters square raft with piles with 345 piles he wanted for that this particular job what did we do we reviewed it we reduced the raft area by 50% and we reduce the number of piles by 70% see how much time you are saving how much material you are saving you know then you are building also will be ready much earlier so that is uh, the second example i wanted to give the safe water which is of course very crucial for health and environment of course uh as was announced uh, i was a part of a foundation called bayrazu foundation which also prasad razu he had dr prasad razu was also the the core strength for me he was with me and then we found you know what happened is even though i come from a very small village then we moved no right so i never went back to my village i mean i went to the village all the time to see parents but not beyond that what was happening i was not knowing so suddenly when uh, i was involved with this foundation and started going to the villages i was shocked to see that all the sources of water were totally polluted you know you don't want to the canals which bring water from the river to the villages Uh, you know those we were in godavari delta so our source of water was from the river godavari godavari is the second biggest river in the country so so terrible earlier as kids we used to swim in the canal and we used to take from the canal water like this and drink so pure when we were kids now you don't want even put your leg into that and that goes as a source for the drinking water so first i thought i was innocent and i was not knowing though i was uh already 60 62 or 63 or so i thought we'll clean the canals so i put in a lot of effort for 6 months to see how to reduce pollution and well just not possible so then we came out with a uh, safe drinking water scheme called sweet 
uh, then uh, to provide safe water for everyone. Now, what was happening is if you go to the villages, you will see that there is, of course, a water tank, or a tank. And they take whatever water is coming from the canal and they try to put through filters, you know, sand filters. They get clogged in one day because the water is so polluted, you know, the filters don't work. But then they will just pump that water into the water tank and then that comes to you by tap to some people and some people a street tap. They think, okay, this is a government water and it's safe. All villages, the water being supplied by the government was unsafe. It was not fit for drinking. So we worked on that and uh, then uh, we have... Uh, uh, we have... Uh, uh, I'm not able to focus it here. So, oh, sorry. So what we did was, don't worry about what is on the slide. What we did was then we, we evolved the system by which we could treat the water with multiple filters and so on and so forth. And then kill the germs by UV radiation. And then build water plants. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Villages also cooperated, 50% uh, villages were contributing it. And then uh, that was a great success. Several awards were won, international awards, I've also read in uh, my data. But all the credit for this should go to Dr. Prasad Rasi. He was the one on the field going around and making things happen. And then uh, now uh, every village is getting a water plant like this. Government has also decided to build these water plants in AP, in some of these areas, and that was very nice. Yeah, of course, strategy was to reduce pollution, which was foolish on my part, thinking that we can reduce pollution in a short time. In a long term, yes, we should. Um, like that, we went through a lot of processes, but that is the key. Third line is the key. We said we dealing with drinking water from the overall supply. For example, if the average person in our villages gets 40 liters of water per day, what is required for drinking is only two liters. So, very small percentage. So, don't try to clean up everything, but at least clean up the drinking water. That was the strategy. And then uh, it was... Uh, the, the process, you can literally go through that, what we have, a raw water tank, and then a series of filters, and then ozonation, UV radiation, and then, and then we gave, you know, this is a typical water plant, inaugurated in one of the villages. And then, uh, uh, who, who participated from Panjaiti Community Foundation sharing responsibility? It's teamwork, otherwise it is not work. You can read and read that. So participation of users right from the inception. So you have to sensitize people, go to them and then talk to them. Not like as a former director of an idea or anything like that. You should go as if you are a, you are one among them, and then you know you are interacting. Capital cost sharing, volunteers. User charges were, it was not given free. If you give free, they will waste water. So we will charge a nominal 12.5 paisa a liter, very small amount. And uh, these are other details. Our village is 62. And other villages, 28, and then, uh, then uh, really a population of 10 lakhs from our adopted villages, and 1.5 lakhs people from other villages had safe water. You know, so that's a major initiative. You know, this all details, too much on the slide, so. Impact, obviously, very good impact. International awards and all that have come for this. Uh, skill development. I already explained to you how important is the skill. You know, unfortunately, we don't value skill. You know, so therefore people don't want to take up the skill lab, skill jobs. Whereas in Germany. The people are very proud to say, I'm a skilled mason. I'm a skilled carpenter. 
and their salary difference also is not that high. You know, maybe an engineering graduate gets, let us say, the skilled worker may get about 70 percent of what the engineering graduate gets. Not only that, they have the option to grow. Finally, they can also become university professors. And the some of the university, university professors are very proud to say that I started my career as a skilled worker. That means the solution is that we should respect everyone. Uh, that's what even Swami Vivekananda says, those of you who have read him. He says, a king or a maharaja or a skilled worker are all same, both the same. Any worker is the same because everybody has to do their job well. Suppose if you have uh, at an institution or uh, at a country who or she does a bad job, what's the use? So that is the approach. So you must always, and in your career, I, I hardly uh, encourage you, be very nice to everyone. Don't look down upon anybody. Okay? Are we, anyone of us are interested to, to feel inferior? Do you, is there anyone here who wants to feel inferior? Huh? Please raise your hands. No, no, no one wants to feel inferior. So the best way not to feel inferior is don't feel superior. Okay. If I feel superior, I have somebody above my head, no? Right? And uh, even the Prime Minister feels superior, then he has to win the next election, right? So, therefore, treat everyone equal. That is a very important message I have learned. That was a very important message I learned in Germany. Everybody is fine. Everybody should be the same. So, for the skill development, yeah. This is very, very important. I want you to note this slide very carefully. Skill levels of workforce. 4.7% of, work, of our workers are only skilled. So less. That means all the people you see on the road, working, construction, everything they have, they're not skilled. Some people may learn from their parents, you know, carpentry and somebody is repairing. All that is slowly disappearing. United States, 52% of the people are skilled. Of the workers, UK, 68%. Germany, 75%. 80% in Japan. And all, all, among all workers, 80% are skilled. In South Korea, 96%. So therefore, skill development is a very, very important component of... Uh, I'm, I'm extremely delighted that you have diploma courses here. And then maybe the, the polytechnic can also consider participating in skill level. So therefore, but we have people, we have manpower. You know, we have to skill them. And we are one of the youngest nations in the world. 47% are below 25 years of age. 47% of India's population today. So that's an advantage. So we have to have the uh, skills. Now before that, I want to make a statement. Recently, I was reading an article. A country like Germany needs immediately 20 lakhs of employees, starting from the skill level to the highest top level. You know, all Australia wants people, Canada wants people, Middle East wants Indians, everybody wants us. So that's an advantage. But, but only, that's, that's an advantage only if you are skilled. If you are not skilled, then it's a huge problem. Even engineering graduates. I don't know how many of you know, this may not apply to PhD tech. I think you are extremely fortunate to have an opportunity to study in PhD tech. The statistics say that 80% of the engineering graduates coming out of Indian universities are not employable. 80%. So what happens if somebody gets an engineering degree but cannot get a job? Don't, he doesn't know his job. He has not focused, he has not studied, he has not learned. That is a big danger. So uh, we have a national mission for skill development. They are talking about uh, to skill 300 million people by 2030 in all areas. Many areas, many initiatives, many players. Mm -hmm. 
there are many private initiatives, but they are not enough. For example, LNT has a construction skill training institute in several places. It's a major initiative, but it so happens most of the people whom they train, they go to Middle East. So it's fine, but at least uh, you are creating them a livelihood and opportunity to grow. So that is, that is fine. All other details you can see later. I don't want to read those numbers. No. They have already trained two lakh workmen through their initiatives. But many more people have to come forward. And I'm sure that this, all major industries are also having their own skill development programs. The types of skills they develop. They also, but most important thing also, they have to train the trainers first. You know, it is it is quite stunning. I mean, the, the training is free, the stay is free, food is given, everything is given. Still, they have a problem to get enough number of people to be trained. That is because the society thinks that uh, people who are doing skilled jobs are not like engineers. No? So everybody who wants to become an engineer, then what will happen? Not possible. This is the challenge. Most critically, vocational skills are not one of the preferred career options. So we have to create an image that uh, skilled people are as important to us as Technicians need to be valued, respected, and cared for. Actually, before that, I wanted to say uh, I'm, uh, I have the fortune, good fortune or privilege of going to many construction sites. And I always found each time I go to a construction site, I, I learn something new, including from the skilled workers. So you have to uh, be open. Be open, try to learn from every incident, from everything what you see, and so on and so forth. What is the role of institutions like PSG Tech? Awareness creation, you know, with more institutions than others in neighborhood. And the students' participation. You know, say for example, the other day uh, we were trying, I come from, my nearest town is a place called Bhimavar. So it's like any other town, much smaller than Coimbatore, of course. Crisscross, people are going here and there. People are talking while driving a motorbike. You know, one hand here and one hand. Somebody is also texting. How many of you drive a uh, scooter or a motorbike? Please raise your hands. Most of you, uh, quite a few of you at least. Do you, do you speak on phone when you are driving? How many of you do that? Don't be honest, you know. <laughs> so please don't do that, it's extremely serious. Nothing is so urgent that you have to take a phone call when you are driving. Just don't do that. And then, then uh, so that's why what I found is the best way to stop all this is educate students, school children, please don't do that. It is very serious, dangerous. One is your own life, right? Second one is somebody else's life, you know? Unfortunately, recently I lost one of our wonderful classmates in engineering. Uh, he was just uh, in front, he was uh, in a town uh, and he was just buying a newspaper. Somebody came and dashed and killed him. So, your life and other people's life. So, therefore, you can take those initiatives, you know. You have NSS here, I'm sure, no? So, as a part of NSS, you can do all that, you know. I think, uh, so... That's, That's all I have. Uh, I hope I have not taken too, too much time. time.
Hello. Hello. Uh, thank, thank you so much, much sir. First, first of all, I do really thank you for such an insightful talk. talk. And for those people who coming from Delhi, I have myself seen the Terminal T3 of Delhi Airport. So it's a, it's a place to be seen by all. So thank you so much for your efforts. Um, so, so my question is that uh, by an estimate, uh, the world will be adding 2 trillion square feet of building by 2060 which is an equivalent of putting up another New York City every month for the next 40 years. So buildings themselves are a big contributor of climate change. In the construction phase of the building itself, concrete and steel uh, amount to an equivalent of 10% of world's annual greenhouse emissions. So what do you think about this? That uh, what is your take on it and how can we get around this? You know, the question is, I think, you have to know, we need so much construction. Actually, I have another presentation saying that uh, how challenging that we have. Actually, uh, we have to build uh, the equivalent of one Mumbai every year to meet the obstacles. Imagine how many of you have been to Mumbai, please raise your hand. It's an endless city, right? So we have to build so much. But we also need buildings because people don't want to live, live on the road, right? They don't want to live on huts. They want to have a reasonable, comfortable way. So the only way is try to optimize and then try to see that you are using minimum materials. But without compromising on safety, obviously safety comes first. Durability is also very important. But at the same time, try to optimize. You know, and don't go things which are not necessary. It's, it's, it's a matter of choice. You know, I joke it straight that uh, in the last 20 years, I might have done uh, condolences to gated communities. Maybe more than 120 of them in the national capital region. They bargain with us for a few lakhs of fees in a, in, a, in a gated community where there are maybe 1,000 flats. But each one of them give a fee of 20 lakhs of rupees to an interior So what are we doing here? You know? Gang here. I am very happy to see a lot of girls here. So I, 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 I joke, uh, you know, after the marriage, I talk to that girl and then say, how did it go? It's terrible, sir. The makeup man took three hours. Makeup person took three hours. I said, you are so beautiful already without any makeup. So why do you need makeup? That means all these things we should. They didn't say not required. What is required? You know, everybody is beautiful in their own way, right? Second thing, I go to a marriage. And then cameraman controls him. Right? The stage is there. All of you are sitting here. Mary is laughing here. All full row of cameraman. Video. I go to the stage. If it is within my family, you have no choice. It is insulting the guests. They come to see the marriage, right? Not the back of the camera. So I think you have to think through and then try to find. One of the biggest problems for India is, first is imports. You know, the largest import is oil, obviously. What is the second largest import? Can you answer one of you the students? Mobile phone they are making. Go. Second largest. Why, why do you need so much gold? Sometimes I see girls, you know. I said they are carrying gold like Isn't it? Is it comfortable to put a lot of gold? I don't know. I never go with it. So what I am saying is, we have to prioritize. We have to understand what is the value. Is it crochet better? Or buy or build huge masons, houses, and uh, you know, some 10 rooms, 15 rooms to show off, or buy big, big cars? 
inverted cars. Then I tell, you know, we build a big house, they have a half a dozen servants. You have no time to enjoy our house. And the servants also can't enjoy because, uh, you know, nobody enjoys. So you have to prioritize. That's all. So, I mean, we have to learn how to live in a simple way. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, please. Hello. Hello, sir. Thank you for this wonderful session. It was really good to hear from you. And maybe battery is over. But you can speak loud. No, the, the question is, you know, that things like okay, in war, no? Uh, which is, of course, terrible. War is always bad. Uh, you know, what, what I feel is that uh, each one of us should recognize what is in our hands and what is not. You know, for example, as a teacher, I will say, first thing, most important thing is we should know what we do not know. But at the same time, we should also know what we know. So similarly, what is in our hands? A lot of things like that are not in our hands. Nobody knows what happens. For example, you may not, I, I've seen Germany, uh, as I said, I, I went in uh, 63 and in Second World War, I don't know how many of you have heard or read about Second World War, which ended in 1945. 65 million people, 6.5 crores of people died in Second Six million Germans died. Every German city was bombed. So I went to Karlsruhe, which is a medium-sized city. It was also bombed. Forty percent of Karlsruhe was destroyed. What is a terrible thing? But it's not in our hands, so we cannot do anything. So if only we can recognize what we can individually control. And also, in a nice way, create awareness to people, you know? Then only everything becomes sustainable. Simple living, I think, always look at common and good. If you, whatever you do, you ask yourself, is it going to help anyone, what I am doing? Or is it going to harm anyone? You know? So, that is the awareness that needs. That only they can have. Otherwise, nobody knows really what is going on. Then? Okay. All the empty bags. And, and, and you have the potential in you to become whatever you want. You have to be focused, decide your goal, prioritize, and I want to reach there. Most, most often you reach the goal if you move in the right. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful lecture, sir. Now, Dr. K. Prakash and Principal, PhD Tech, will present a moment or to our chief guest. Mr. 
and requesting Dr. M. Aras, General Secretary, PhD Tech Alumni Association, to deliver a word of thanks. A very good evening to all present here. I wish to thank our patron, Dr. K. Prabhasan, Principal of PhD College of Technology, who has presenting over this endowment program. Thank you, sir. It is my pleasure to thank today guest speaker, Dr. Professor V.S. Raju, former director, IIT Delhi, and also former dean, ICSR, IIT Chennai, for delivering the first Dr. G. Bhatnavam endowment lecture on the theme of sustainable engineering. Thank you very much, sir, for your enlightening speech, which brought new insight for the role of academic institution, environmental initiative, sustainable engineering practice, such as utilization of layers, optimal foundation design, safe drinking water initiative, and importance of skill development. Once again, on behalf of our amazing, I should very much thank to today's guest speaker. Thank you, sir. It is very nice, guest sir, on the part of Mrs. Rekha and Ms. Sandhya to have come forward to institute and endowment in honor of the memory of Dr. G. Bhatmanabham, former director of ARC, and has been a great evolution of PH institutions. We sincerely thank Rekha, Rekha Gerke and Dr. Prasad Raju, former scientist, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, for coordinating this government program and also suggesting Professor V.S. Raju for today's guest speaker. Thank you, sir. My heartfelt gratitude, Mr. R. Mahesh Swami, President of the PhD Alumni Association, who has participated and gave the welcome address. I would like to thank Dr. B. Raj, Principal, PhD Polytechnic College, Secretaries Dr. R. Murugan, Dr. S. Brinda, Treasurer Dr. M. Sundaram, Dr. Chandra Mohan, Dr. Gopal Krishnan. I would like to express my sincere thanks to all the deans, head of the department, faculty member of PhD Tech. My heartfelt thanks to all the UG and PG students of PG College of Technology and guests and specialties for their valuable participation. Once again, I thank one and all for your presence here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I am requesting everyone to rise up for national anthem. Refreshments are arranged next, adjacent to the D block conference hall. Backside of D block conference hall. <laughs> 